to this Talks at Google virtual event. I'm Carmen Ramos. I'm a senior video producer on the global small business marketing team here at Google. I'm not only a huge fan of all things cinema and a self-proclaimed foodie, from trying new restaurants to adding to my ever-growing cookbook collection, I couldn't be more excited about being the moderator for this panel, where my love for food and my love for cinema come together in such a magical way. But before we get started, I wanted to remind all the audience members that we'll be taking questions towards the end of this talk. So as you think of questions throughout this conversation, please add them to the live chat on the right-hand side of the screen. So with that, I can't wait to introduce you to our, to our today's guests, Jen Fujikawa and Mark Sumarak, who are here to talk about their release cookbook, Avengers Campus, the official cookbook. It's awesome. It's a compilation of a variety of recipes inspired by the wider world of the Avengers, featuring recipes, appetizers, main course, desserts, and drinks, this cookbook is the perfect guide to any Marvel foodie. Now, before we meet our panelists, I'd like to give you a little bit of a background of their amazing careers. Jen Fujikawa is a lifestyle and pop culture author of several cookbooks inspired by iconic films and television franchises, including I Love Lucy, Star Wars, and The Princess Bride. Her foodie expertise also spans past the book realm, and she has made appearances on such TV shows as NBC series Food Fighters, and has been a featured guest at Disney California Adventures Food and Wine Festival. She has created content for Disney, Lucasfilms, Marvel, and more. And you can learn more about Jen's amazing recipes on Instagram at her handle of Just Jen Recipes. Now for Mark, Mark began his writing career in the late 1990s as a co-creator of the online comic book site, Abandoned Warehouse Press. Since joining the Marvel Comics staff, ser serving as an assistant editor, he's worked on over 500 comic book publications. Mark is an Eisner and Harvey Award nominated writer whose work has been featured in comics, books, and video games, showcasing some of pop culture's most beloved franchises, including Marvel, Star Wars, Harry Potter, Firefly, Ghostbusters, Back to the Future, and many more. Most recently, he has been the writer and behind the story of the award-winning mobile game, Marvel Future Revolution. Jen, Mark, we're so excited to have you today. Hi, Carmen, thanks for having us. Hi, how are you guys doing? Great. Great. Well, I'm so excited to see you guys again. Um, as you know, our conversations have been so much fun. Food and wine are, I think, you know, two of the most universal connectors that there are. Um, and the fr franchises that you guys have worked on are world renowned. So I guess to warm us up for fun, out of all the franchises that you've worked for, if you could be one of the characters for 24 hours, who would it be and why? I'll let Mark go first. All right. Well, you know, it is a hard question because uh, there's so many heroes and so many villains to choose from, uh, from all the different franchises that I've been able to, to work with. Uh, but for me, I think I'd probably go with The Watcher. Uh, for those who don't know him, he's a near omnipotent being who is devoted to observing everything that transpires across all realities. He's sworn never to interfere with them, but he kind of is terrible at keeping that oath. Um, for me as a storyteller, it would be the ultimate power to be able to peer into those alternate dimensions and see all of the what ifs out there in the multiverse. Not just the big epic battles, but also the small human moments. I love that. How about you, Jen? Um, for me, I don't really want to be any character because they have all kinds of problems. But I will tell you that my favorite character is Wolverine and I collect Wolverine art. I have a gallery of Wolverine art um, in my house. But if I had to pick a Star Wars character, it would probably be Gormanda from the Star Wars holiday special because she is a chef. She has her own show and she teaches people how to cook. I love that. Oh, that's so fun. I've always thought about that question too, and I'm I'm five two. I'm I'm kind of short, so being the Hulk would be my choice because to be that big for once, and you know my job is to smash things. Like why not? Um, mm -hmm. Well, so fun. So as we kind of talk about you know pop culture and the franchises that you've been a part of, are there any particular franchises that really inspired you to take the career paths that you guys have chosen? Jen. We can start with Jen this time. Um. I came about this in a rather roundabout way. I used to be a Walt Disney Imagineer, so I'm like a trained architect. And I started creating recipes for fun for my own creative outlet. And uh, I've always loved Disney, Marvel, and Star Wars, and they all kind of serendipitously came together under one roof. Star Wars has been a part of my life from the very beginning, and it's always brought me back home. 
and for me, you know, I was a I was a child of the '80s, so pop culture was my life. I was surrounded by amazing cartoons and comic books and video games and movies, and so franchises like Star Wars and Marvel will always be and have always been a part of my life. Um, for me, it was less of a single moment of inspiration that I wanted to get in this business, and more of a moment of realization because after living these these stories for as long as I did and enjoying them as entertainment, there was a certain point in my teenage years where I realized there was more than just words and pictures, there were credits. And that meant that people made these things. People did this for a living. And once I realized that, my tiny brain exploded and I knew I had to devote my path to making sure that I did that for a living as well someday too. That's amazing. I know you get to the end of any of these Marvel films now and it's like, you know, toilet paper long worth worth of names and so many creatives part of it but that's so awesome it's just so fun to be part of like the fantasy world and the imagination can run wild and you know your careers have been illustrious in terms of writing and jen you've you know you've been a disney imagineer so the the, the actual physical spaces that these stories can take shape but as writers you know it's it's such an incredible craft what could you say is the most difficult part of the craft and what would you say is like the most rewarding we can start with jen this time um, the most difficult part of the craft, I think, is inspiration, especially when, like Mark and I, we've written so many stories and we want to, you know, keep expanding the universes, but without going back and repeating ourselves. And so I think sometimes inspiration can be difficult, but I always look to friends and family and I ask a lot of questions and, and that's kind of gets me out of that, I guess, writer's block kind of funk. Um, the most rewarding thing definitely is having people come up to you. I do a lot of um, comic book conventions for work and then uh, to sign these books. And it's so amazing that people will come up and say, I've made this recipe or I read this story from Mark and it was very inspiring. And I love that. I love that people are actually using these things um, in their daily lives. And for me, I think that the most uh, difficult and the most rewarding thing are one and the same. And that's that's creativity on command. Uh, what a lot of people don't realize is that books like these aren't like novels where you can percolate an, on an idea for years and nurture the story. They're usually part of a carefully crafted publishing plan, and they're usually meant to be released about, alongside some major event or some piece of media. Um, so crafting these big ideas that also meet a licensor's very specific needs on an inevitably tight schedule can be a real challenge. Uh, but it's something that I've always been good at, and it's something that the act of that creation under intense pressure has always been a, a rewarding challenge for me. It's something that I've enjoyed. Um, so it's kind of both. It's it's tough, but it's also exceptionally rewarding when it all comes together. Absolutely. And the team's behind it and you guys play such an integral part. Um, and to your point, Jen, you know, fans coming up to it, we, we had the, the opportunity to meet prior to this chat and I was already fangirling a little bit. I have two of your other cookbooks that I've gone through back to back and I know I have to show the audience, but these are two of Jen's. I love them. You have to get them. They're such a fun read. And she's such, you know, a, a caretaker to the franchises that she writes for. But as well with Mark, I can only imagine, especially in the MCU universe where fans are fierce. I would say so for, for stars, Mark's book's a little, a little bigger and heavier. Um, <laughs> I have also been going through this. So I, you know, applaud you for all of these creative, um, creative opportunities that you guys have taken on. And I, as a fan for both food and film, really do appreciate it. Um, but would love to learn more because how did you two end up teaming, teaming up and putting together this amazing piece of work right here? It was really serendipitous. I had been writing in licensed publishing for almost 20 years on a number of brands. Um, and that ultim ultimately led me to co-writing a few other branded cookbooks, but not with Jen. Uh, one of those cookbooks happened to be a Star Wars cookbook that was focusing on Galaxy's Edge in the Disney parks. And after that one, uh, I was asked by Insight Editions, who published that cookbook, um, to co-write the Life Day cookbook, which is based on a Wookiee holiday within the Star Wars universe. Um, and we were using the same narrative voice that we had used for Galaxy's Edge. Jen was tapped to create the recipes for that one, and we worked on the Life Day cookbook together. Uh, we instantly meshed in terms of our deep love of food and the franchise. And the collaboration went so well that they kept us teamed up for the Avengers Campus cookbook and maybe some other stuff that I can't talk about yet. Yeah, totally. Um, 
Life Day was always my favorite holiday, so I jumped at the chance to write a cookbook about it. I keep a lot of sketchbooks just in case anyone asked me to write something. And I had already written all these things that I loved about Life Day. So it was really great to be paired with Mark because we just have the same mindset. I feel like we both have the same work ethic too, and it just works out really well. Absolutely. No, I think it's fantastic. I, what You guys were so lovely and sent me a copy, and I've read it front to back. The entire way and I actually went to uh, the Disney Avenger campus so I've tried some of this food in real life and guys it is amazing if you guys haven't been um, but to dive in a little bit more to this to, for people that might not know too much about the cookbook yet Mark can you talk about the narrative background around this and what you're centering the narrative for the cookbook around Absolutely. Uh, the Avengers Campus Cookbook is narrated by a character named Cassie Lang. Uh, Cassie is the daughter of Scott Lang, who is also known as Ant-Man in the Marvel Universe. Uh, while her dad uses pin particles to save the world, Cassie had a different idea. Why not use them to feed the world? See, because pin particles are the things that make Ant-Man grow and shrink. And she thought maybe they could be used to increase food supply and shrink waste, reduce waste. Um, so Cassie wrote a report about it for school, uh, which inspired his dad and her the, her dad and his partner, uh, the Wasp, uh, Hope Van Dyne, to open up the PIM test kitchen to test out her theories. At the same time, Cassie got invited to become a member of the Worldwide Engineering Brigade, which is a part of the Avengers campus. It's called Web, and it's a Stark-sponsored think tank of young innovators devoted to building a brighter future. Um, during her time on the Avengers campus, Cassie obviously, you know, pushed the boundaries of science, but she also, like any teen, had a lot of fun, made a lot of great friends, and ate a lot of amazing food. And that's what this is. This is Cassie putting together a book where she can take a piece of the Avengers campus home with her, and so can everyone else, um, so that they can enjoy it when they get lonely or a little bit hungry. Absolutely. And, you know, I think before we dive into the delicious recipes that Jen designed for this. I just have to show the audience. It's just so well crafted. And, and for any MCU fan, there's so many nods to other franchises. So we've got Wakanda. Um, there's some other, there's some other, uh, there are Spider-Man cupcakes that me and my cousin are going to make this weekend. Um, so with that being said, Mark, like how is that navigating, making sure that you tick the boxes or how do you select the characters that end up in here outside of like the wasp and the ant family? Sure. Well, I think one of the best parts about Avengers Campus and the Marvel Universe as a whole is that it's populated by all these characters. It, it, they always have this feeling of you never know who you're going to run into. Um, Spider-Man swings through the streets of Manhattan. He could run into the Human Torch at any moment. And you always feel that way in the Marvel Universe. And the Avengers Campus is the same way. Sure, you've got the PIM Test Kitchen and the Worldwide Engineering Brigade, which Cassie was already involved in. So it's natural to include Ant-Man and the Wasp and some of the web kids like Peter Parker. But then you got also have right near the Worldwide Engineering Brigade building, you've got the Avengers headquarters. You've got a mysterious ancient sanctum where Doctor Strange shows up every now and then. You've got the Collector's Gallery where the Guardians of the Galaxy are trying to break out from. So once you factor that in, all of the possibilities, the inspirations that we could draw from suddenly became endless. Oh, absolutely. And, that, and that's a perfect segue because I can't wait to hear from Jen you know, putting together, taking an amazing franchise and you work for huge, well, you know, world renowned Star Wars, I Love Lucy, of course, the MCU universe. What is the process that you go through to be able to design these, you know, recipes that will resonate one for home cooks, but also for fans of the franchise? Um, as someone who loves the Disney parks and goes there regularly, I visited uh, Avengers Campus several times before this was e this even came to me. So I was very familiar with the food, very familiar with the characters. And just like Mark said, I kind of wanted to bring everyone together as if they were on the campus. And if you've been there, you know that kind of like Mark's narrative, the food is really big or really small. So I took that same idea and added it to the recipes, incorporated the characters, and you'll see that there's like gigantic sized food and there's super tiny food and things like that. And so um, all of that together, um, and then also working with the actual chefs who make the dishes that are popular in the park, like the not so big chicken sandwich and the shawarma, those are like some of the favorite things that people love to eat when they go. And so I kind of went off of that. I started with that as the core and then kind of expanded on it. Amazing. Um, and I'm I'm a home cook. I have over 100 cookbooks that I love to collect. So I'm, I'm so glad to add these gems to my collection. And I've had definitely more than a few snafus in the kitchen. So as you were putting together this particular cookbook, did you have any accidents in the test kitchen or recipes that were kind of left on the cutting room floor? 
Um, I always have recipes that are on the cutting room floor, but mostly because I can't get them in the book. I try to, you know, I have so many big ideas and some of them I save and reshape for other books that Mark and I do together. Um, so they're always used and all my recipes are tested on my kids. So they eat every single one start to finish and they will tell me whether or not they're good. So if they don't make the cut, then they don't go in the book. Oh my God, amazing. If you ever need a third kid to test these out on, I know we don't live too far away from each other. Just call me. I will be there. No problem. Um, but no, this is, you did such an amazing job and I can't speak highly enough um, to be able to go to the campus below and try to attempt to do these. So my next question will segue to what is your favorite recipes outside of the book? But for the audience that's dialing in, I've been able to eat this and I will try to recreate it, but everyone's got to give a go at the not so little chicken sandwich. This one's one of my favorite ones out of the book. Yeah, um, but totally. for, for you, Jenner Mark, do you have a favorite recipe? Is there one that's a tried and true family favorite? Um, for me, I think one of the my favorite recipes in there is my, one of my kids really loves mac and cheese. So I always try to put a variation of mac and cheese in every book that I write. Plus, who doesn't love mac and cheese? But for this one, instead of using small, you know, tiny elbow pastas like normal, you try and use what Mark's written and make something really large and out of control. So if you used a pin particle and made mac and cheese, we would use like giant shell pasta. And it's actually very gratifying to eat out of that giant pan with giant shell pasta mac and cheese. But my other favorite recipe in the book is something that is completely not on the campus that I just created on my own, which is these spider bot cupcakes that you showed. Um, uh, spider bots are something that you can buy on campus. They're actually hidden throughout the campus cre um, creating havoc. If you look, they're like all over the park. And so I wanted to create a recipe that people could bring their own spider bot home with them, but make it edible. So these little cupcakes look like spider bots, but they're very, very simple to make. Yes. I'll have to I'll have to flash that up, but they're great. Their arms are, I think, uh, Twizzlers. They're yeah. so cute. Yeah, I definitely. That's the one that I'm making with my cousin this weekend. How about you, Mark? Have you tried any of the recipes at home? Yeah, and you know, I, I'm really. It's hard to choose because there's so many good ones in here, and there's so many different categories in there to select from. Uh, when it comes to dishes from the park that are just inspired directly by the campus, I'd probably have to go with the Atomic Fusion Pretzel. Um, it's the one that's loaded with the buffalo chicken and the blue cheese. And it's kind of, there are a couple of different pretzels in the book. Um, there's the gigantic one that you can buy at the parks. And then there's this uh, atomic fusion one that has some toppings on it. Um, that is kind of Ant-Man's super secret recipe. Uh, and then, um, for, I love that mac and cheese too, Jen. That was one that I had written down as, as one of my favorites, just cause it's such a fun play on a traditional mac and cheese. It's got all the elements of a classic mac and cheese, but with a whole new twist on it. Um, and I think it's really fun that, uh, you know, a lot of people, when they get a cookbook, they focus on the food, but we've got a whole drink section too. Um, and there's some yeah. really, oh, really yeah. fun and tasty drinks in there as well. Um, and, and I think that's worth, you know, anybody who picks up a copy should check those out because most of them are fairly simple to make, but they're really delicious, uh, and, and really refreshing. Oh, yes. My kids are so excited about those spider bot cupcakes too. We're, we're going to make a batch of those really soon. <laughs> Oh, they're super great. And I, I love your book, Jen, because I was going through it. And if you know, I'm doing my cupcakes with my cousin this weekend, it's just so interactive and it's approachable. Can you talk about, you know, dialing back to the research, there is a difference between creating food for a theme park and there's, you know, creating food for home chefs, you know, in terms of scale and whatnot. Are there anything that is there anything that you found difficult in terms of translating like the big chicken sandwich for someone like me to be able to make it versus, you know, 2000 people a day um, in the Avenger Park? Right. With um, the Disney parks, they have these amazing chefs that work with them and um, they know totally what they're doing and then they make it on a large scale. Um, so for the home chef, you have to kind of use math and bring bring the numbers down and instead of for 80 people make something for like one serving. Um, I think the biggest challenge in working with those chefs is trying to make it as easy as possible as and as accessible as possible for home cooks because when I when people read my books, I never want them to struggle. I want them to be able to follow the recipes very clearly and also have access to ingredients. Nowadays you can order things from Amazon and it's much easier, but you know if you don't have an ingredient, it kind of ruins the whole thing. So I want to make things as simple as possible for people so they don't feel undeterred about wanting to move forward and just make the, make the recipes that they want to try to eat. Absolutely. 
Um, and as a plug to that, what I what I loved about reading um, the Avengers Campus Cookbook and your two other cookbooks, Jen, is you really make it such a fun, you know, approachable, not only from a from a narrative perspective, but recipes as well. Like the I Love Lucy cookbook, which again, can't plug it enough. People should also get these. Um, add them to your collection. But Jen goes by episodes. And it's just kind of nice in terms of a nostalgic perspective to go back and like you're picking out really small details per episode and same thing with the cookbook. Um, how many times would you say that you've watched some of these video or sorry, films from the MCU universe to pick up on these small moments? Like, you know, the shawarma one is iconic. I think anybody that's an MCU fan knows that that's the, one of the go-to spots at the Avengers campus. But are any of the films that you watch from the franchises that are represented in the book, any of your favorites or ones that you're really like, I have to put that in there because it's a great nod to that particular character or, or franchise? Well, as a huge fan, I watch movies and TV, you know, like crazy. And I only accept projects that I truly know and love the IP because I feel like um, I, I can speak to it. And I can speak to the fans and they can tell that I really love um, that franchise based on the recipe. And so when I watch movies, I don't watch them like a normal person. I watch through the first time and I basically pull out food moments. I'm barely watching the plot. I'm barely watching what's happening because I'm thinking, what can I make out of this? So then I have to rewatch it several times and then go back and, and kind of look at the or overarching story. But for me, food always jumps out first. If you see a droid you've never seen before, um, when BB-8 first appeared, all I could think about is how I can make that edible for people. So that's kind of how I watch movies and television. Amazing. How about you, Mark? I know you've done also other collab cookbooks and um, the Avengers Campus, the official one that we have right here is, is awesome. And you have been, again, a guardian to the narrative of all of these different characters over the years. Is there a particular film or movie where like a, a foodie scene that you, you've seen in the book that really resonated with you? You know, I, I got to say the the shawarma moment certainly is is the one everybody thinks of first, and there's good reason for that. It's such an iconic moment at the end of that first Avengers movie, um, and I think in the Avengers Campus Cookbook, it was more about tapping into the personalities and the flavors of the character rather than individual moments on screen. It was a lot of the park, a lot of inspiration from the park, but those weren't necessarily on the screen. Um, and, and really tapping into the vibe of what is this character all about and what food represents them well when they make an appearance in our book. Um, and so that's kind of where we went to with this one. When we work on other projects, Star Wars is a great example. Um, we could spend weeks scouring old episodes of, of various projects and, and films to make sure that we're getting all of these references. And, and Jen already has them all memorized. Uh, but I like to go back and do review too and, and go back through these pieces and say, oh, hey, look, that person in the background is eating something cool and zoom in on it and see what it is and what it could be, even though it's not the... the largest part of the scene of what's going on, it brings you more into that world if you can reference those moments. Um, so I love doing that kind of stuff. It's great to go back and watch with a, a different viewpoint. And to Mark's point, because this book is about Avengers Campus um, and the characters, not necessarily the movies, um, to do my research, you know, I had to go to Disneyland like twice a week. It was such a chore. So... <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. I mean, and you were also a Disney Imagineer. And so that, that's a perfect segue to my next question as well as we've talked about, you know, the writing aspect, we talked about the research, and then of course, putting together an experience like this for home chefs to be able to bring home the narrative and, and have something fun to do in the kitchen. But you know, the parks are a huge draw, and they're, they're only growing, not only in size, but just expansion. So I've, I've been lucky enough, like you, Jen, I've been to the Avengers campus more than once. Um, definitely have eaten at Pim's Kitchen and um, have done the food festivals like the Disney California Food and Wine Festival. Um, so with that being said, when you are on campus, like what is what is your go to strategy when you're researching? Like, is it eat everything? Is it bring friends and family to kind of try everything and see what resonates? So because I go so often, I do it a couple ways. Like you said, I do go with a bunch of friends and then I order everything and I have them all with me to, you know, eat the food. And then I go individually and I kind of just buy a couple things and I just sit there and I just kind of get the atmosphere and I look and see what people are eating and what they're liking. And, you know, as someone who goes to Disneyland regularly, Carmen, you know, you sit there and you just kind of people watch and you kind of take it all in and that's almost almost as much fun as riding the rides. And so that's what I truly love to do. And luckily I could just drive down the freeway and do that whenever I want. And so 
that's a huge part of getting inspiration for coming up with new recipes, seeing what kids are, um, what characters kids are running up to and, and just what people want to eat. Absolutely. I mean, Mark, you've got two little ones as well. So going to the theme parks, it's either give them all the sugar or don't let them touch it. Um, in terms of in terms of going, and I know you live a bit a little bit too far away, not like me and Jen, who can actually zip over to Disneyland whenever you like. And um, when you visit the theme parks, is that something that has also inspired you over the years to participate in cookbooks of the food experience outside of the the fandom stuff? Absolutely. You know, I live in a distant land known as Ohio. So like you said, I can't get to, uh, to get to Disneyland as often as I'd like. And unfortunately, I didn't even uh, get to experience the campus yet in person um, because during the pandemic, I was you know, unable to make any trips out. So the last time I was there, they had just opened uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy mission breakout. Um, so I did get to experience that, but they were still working on the campus at the time. Fortunately, I got to work with a wonderful team at Imagineering to get all the vital info that I needed for this book to make sure that everything fit right into the world they were building. Uh, but when you're at Disney, whether it's at Galaxy's Edge or another area of the park, you're so immersed in the theming of what is around you and not just what you're seeing, but what you're eating, what you're experiencing, what you're riding, that it all kind of comes together. And it is something that you just kind of soak in. Um, and I've, I've always felt that way whenever I'm at Disney. Food is a huge part of every Disney trip that I plan. It's probably, if you ask my wife, it's probably the first thing that I plan. It's not what rides we're going to go on. It's not which parks we're going to be at. It's where could we eat and how can we plan the rest of our trip around that? And so it kind of segues perfectly into a, a project like this. Awesome. Now I, I take the same approach in everything. So definitely Disneyland, you gotta, you gotta, you have to have a plan or you're just going to leave overly stuffed and can't even ride the rides. I've done it. Um, so with that being said, you know, both of you are so imaginative, amazing writers. Um, one of the things that we were talking about in, in our pre-call is, you know, food is is a unifying connector. And I think especially in the MCU, for um, as active as these a lot of these characters are, saving the world, flying around, um, it's really grounding when you see the family dinner scenes. So, you know, Black Widow had an amazing one. Um, Gilgamesh in the Internals is someone that I'd love to eat with because he seems like he knows his way around the kitchen. So kind of throwing back to the realm of being fans, and I know you've watched these films over and over again, are any of the MCU families um, one that, one, you'd love to have a dinner party with? And then two, if you were going to this dinner party, what dish would you bring? I'm so, going to tell you um, a little bit. I'm, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going okay. to use a uh, use a family that hasn't been completely introduced into the MCU yet, uh, but I go with the Fantastic Four um, because there's something special about them. They're more than just heroes. They're scientists, they're adventurers, they're imaginots, and most importantly, they're family. So I'd love to sit around a table with them and hear the stories about all their cosmic adventures over the years. In terms of what I bring, uh, I have to imagine that Reed Richards would probably have bioengineered some sort of bizarre burger using alien protein he just discovered in the negative zone. So I'd probably keep it simple. Uh, I'd probably just go with some kebabs, some nicely marinated skewers of meats and veggies. And then I'd leave him to the human torch to cook uh, because he's going to do that way better than I am. Love that answer. That's great. You have to put other people to work in the kitchen. That's that's there a rule go. in my house. Give him to Johnny. <laughs> there you go. How about you, Jen? Um, a recipe that I think I would bring is one from our cookbook, which is the Accutech R&D dumplings. Accutech, if you know your Marvel lore, is a company that's actually with a subsidiary of Stark Industries that bought Stark Fujikawa. So my last name is actually in Marvel canon, and I always am like, that's on purpose. So I always try and get it in. I'm like, you know, Stark Fujikawa should really be in every single Marvel property. Um, and so it was really exciting to be at Avengers Campus and see if you look up, Accutech is everywhere. And if you know that Accutech is Stark Fujikawa, I'm like, I need to create a recipe that is purely me, since my name is sort of attached to this book. And that would be these um, spicy dumplings that my kids love to eat when we go out. They love to order it. And during the pandemic, um, we could not go out. So I just made them at home on my own regularly. And that is in the book. And that is how that happened. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Now, you, you two are ones that I would want in a back pocket if we're doing a Disney, if we're doing a Disney food tasting and or dinner party, definitely top of the guest list. Um, but with that being said, you know, it's been so great learning about how you put this book together, you know, your your careers and your path that led you here. Um, and of course, as pop culture goes, everyone on that's watching this has their favorite. 
whether it is the MCU, which is again, a massive family and a massive fan family, or, you know, to the point, Jen, you, you've been writing books for Princess Bride, which has a huge following as well as um, I Love Lucy, who doesn't know who, what that what that franchise is. Um, so we'd love to hear from you, like any upcoming stuff that we should keep our eyes out for. We want to support you guys, but you know, huge fan of your work. So I can't wait to see what what's up next for you guys. So maybe Mark, you can kick us off. Sure. Uh, I've got a new book coming out this fall. It's called Marvel Anatomy, A Scientific Study of the Superhuman. Uh, it's this beautifully illustrated, huge coffee table book, bigger than the one you held up before. Um, and it goes under the surface and under the skin to examine the powers of Marvel's greatest heroes uh, and villains on a physical level. So it's all an anatomical view of all their superpowers. And I've also got a book called Star Wars Secrets of the Bounty Hunters coming out. Uh, it explores some of the most ruthless and skilled bounty hunters in the galaxy uh, from Boba Fett to the Mandalorian. Um, so that should be a lot of fun too. And then I'm still working on uh, Marvel Future Revolution, which is our uh, mobile game. And that has uh, been doing really well and has won uh, last year's two, 2021 uh, Google Play Competitive Game of the Year Award. So we're very proud of that. Awesome. How about you, Jen? Um, I have written 10 books and they all seem to be coming out one month, one after the other. So it feels like I'm promoting them um, every month. Um, in next week, uh, Star Wars Padawan Cookbook comes out and that book I wrote um, with the Jedi Trials in mind to teach kids how to cook from beginning to end. So you start with basically no knowledge whatsoever, make your way through the trials, and then by trial 10, you should be able to cook with your family at home. And that one comes out next week. And then um, next month, I have the Ghostbusters cookbook coming out, which is a something that's really near and dear to my heart. And I've been wanting to write for years. And so I can't wait for that one to come out as well. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I'm definitely going to add them to my both of your books to my my pre-order uh, tab in, in Amazon.com and definitely order those off those. And I will definitely be emailing you questions once I get those in photos of my attempts to some of these recipes that I know are going to be delicious to try. Um, but before we end, I definitely want to thank you guys so much for joining us today. We do have some questions from audience members that we're going to toss to um, and see if we can get a little bit more information out of you guys about these amazing books that you guys have written. So I'll toss it over if the tech team can bring that up for me. Cool. So first question here is from Alicia Chan. I'll be going to Disneyland in September. What are your favorite dishes from Pim's Test Kitchen? My favorite thing to eat there is um, what we talked about, Carmen, which is the not so little chicken sandwich, just because it's so like fun. It's massively big and it has a tiny little bun and it's just super delicious. Um, it's, it's something that you see probably every table eating when you get there and people share it. But honestly, I just eat it myself. <laughs> oh, I finished one to myself. So I'm yeah. in your camp, Jen. It's delicious. Absolutely. And Mark, you are going to make your way out there soon enough. Jen and I will meet you there as soon as you yeah, can come absolutely. For sure. Yeah. And I mean, there's so many um, dishes that are just so visually stunning that even seeing them in a photograph or seeing them from a distance, you can't help but uh, have your mouth water. Um, from the giant pretzels to the enormous meatballs um, to the, the the panini that serves like eight people. Um, I want to try them all and I can't wait to get out there. Awesome. Well, have fun, Alana. Next question. From Trisha, how do you accommodate different skill levels when you're working on a cookbook? I love Marvel, but the food at Disney seems intimidating. Yeah, for sure. It seems intimidating, but what I do is try and take those recipes and break it down so that anyone can make them, make it as easy as possible. Step-by-steps help a lot. And then also breaking down again, the ingredients in a way where you're like, okay, this is for the main, for instance, for the chicken center, this is for the chicken, this is for the topping so that you can kind of see that, that, that this giant thing isn't that much of an undertaking. It's broken down into processes. And I always tell people, somewhat, people always ask me, what, is, what advice would you give for someone who's just starting to cook? And it's to read the recipe through front to back from the beginning, before you do anything, before you even buy ingredients. Because then you can tell where you are skill level wise and see what you can handle. Absolutely. Actually, what I love that you did, um, which I've never seen in a cookbook before, actually in the Gudetama cookbooks is you actually rated them based off of skill level, which was great. And anybody yeah. that doesn't know this franchise, it's the cutest lazy little. That's also guy. because he's he's super lazy. So I put a lazy yeah. meter in there to see 
how much effort you actually want to put into cooking. <laughs> because we all have those days where you're like, I'm hungry, but how hungry am I? How much do I want to work for this? Absolutely. It's like cook, DoorDash, which one, which am I going to? Yeah. Awesome. And I have to speak to that as well, because I'm no professional chef. I've written a lot of these books with, with wonderful chefs and, and have been very fortunate to be a part of these projects, but I'm not a professional chef by any means. And I am able to cook most of the dishes in these books because of the way Jen puts the recipes together. Um, and that really is a testament to her ability, not only to craft wonderful dishes, but to create them in a way that other people can enjoy them at home as well. And and, and it goes a long way. Uh, it, it lets you bring those dishes that do look intimidating in the parks right in your own home in a way that's not really as hard as you think. Oh, absolutely. And I was reading the book, you know, front cover to back cover. And what I love also, Jen, that you're very thoughtful about is, you know, I have over 100 cookbooks and there's sometimes where you're like, I'm going to do this recipe, but I can't reuse half of these ingredients really ever. But, you know, seeing the repetitive use cases of some of the ingredients you have is also great and economical for home cooks yes. to be able to invest in experimenting and at the same time not being wasteful. Absolutely. And also we set up these cookbooks in a way too that you can create a meal. So you're not just doing a one-off. Like you can take a side dish, you can take a main dish and you can take a drink. And then like you said, reuse ingredients, but also just make it sort of like a, a whole instead of just a single one-off uh, recipe. Or two or three desserts. Yeah, oh, just yeah. eat two or three desserts for dinner. I'm, I'm down with that. Or the drinks. Yeah, definitely that plug mark is the right one because there is some really delicious drinks in here that you can do at home, everyone, um, and with things that you have in the pantry already. So I will plug that for sure. Um, next question. From Tracy, are there any recipes with ingredients you don't love but knew it was true to the Avenger character for that recipe? Ooh, good one. That's a great question, Tracy. Um, ingredients that I don't love. I would say that I hate bananas, but I know that they are universally loved and they're very useful. So I do my best to incorporate it because they're also easily accessible. I just don't like the taste of them, but um, my kids do. And again, it's sort of like, what will universally speak to the people reading and buying this book and what will they love? So take one for the team and eat a banana. <laughs> Are there any ingredients you don't like particularly, Mark, in general? You know, in, I'm, a, I'm a terribly, uh, I'm not a fan of, of iceberg lettuce. So anything that has uh, lettuce of that variety in it, I just have never been able to handle. Um, so I apologize, Jen, but the Groot salad, just those, those types of greens just aren't for me. I was just going to say that that's immediately what came to mind. Yep. Okay. So, so that one I may not be making at home, but so many of the others have so many wonderful things in them that you can't pass them up. Yeah. Oh, definitely. It was a one. It was a one dish I saw, and I was like, okay, uh, not fried, baked, or <laughs> whatnot. But definitely, it's a crowd pleaser for sure. Um, cool. Next question from Jessica Hackett: Which recipe from the cookbook would you recommend for those who are culinarily challenged? I would take Mark's advice and start with the drinks because it's a very easy way to get yourself into the habit of following a recipe gathering ingredients. And then when you get a little more confidence, move into appetizers, start small and just work your way up. That's what I say. Yeah, Absolutely. totally agreed. It, it really can be a progression. Um, and, and the nice thing about this book is the way it's built from, from appetizers and small plates to larger entrees to desserts. There is a, a certain growth in the terms, in, in terms of the amount of effort that goes into it. Doesn't mean it's more difficult, but it does take more attention and more focus, more ingredients along the way. And so starting out with something simple like those drinks or like the appetizers, and then working your way towards some of the more complex recipes will really give you a good foundation. Absolutely. And again, I always say bring a buddy in the kitchen because that way, if you both succeed or you both fail, at least there's there's someone that you can kind of bounce those ideas off of and make sure that, did I read it right? Is it a cup or is it a tablespoon? I've made the mistake um, before. So definitely having that, that extra accountability is also fun to be able to infuse, I think. Awesome. So we have a couple more questions for sure. Let's go for the next one. Seesaw. You both worked on so many notable franchises, but what are there? Oh, but are there others you'd like to tackle in the future? Yeah, there are two that that I would love to work on that I haven't managed to uh, get my hands on yet, and those are Indiana Jones and The Goonies. Um, those are are two franchises that 
I have loved since I was old enough to love and experience those things in the theater. And uh, yeah, someday, someday I'll get to, I don't know if it'll be a cookbook or what it'll be, but I, I will get my hands on those franchises someday um, and, and get to add a chapter to their lore. I hope. Oh my gosh. See, Mark and I are always on the same page because I am totally with you on both fronts. And also Goonies is one of my favorite movies as well. And that is something that I've always wanted to work on too. Oh my gosh. I I will sign up to read and watch anything that you guys do from either one of those franchises. Ho yeah, hopefully and I think our publisher is listening. Oh, yes. <laughs> where where do we sign the petition? <laughs> like I will definitely sign up to get those ones made. That would be so fun. Especially Goonies. I think, you know, cookbook or otherwise, that would be a lot of, of lore to kind of dig into and have a lot of fun with for sure. Um, and yeah. you've got you've got fans from multiple generations, so huge fan base. Plugging it, whoever's watching, <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's make sure this happens. Cool. Next question from Jamie: Do you find a need to offer more vegan options? Is there a higher demand and plans to provide more offerings? Um, so this is interesting because on Instagram, people always comment. Um, I put all of my recipes on Instagram, um, the ones that don't go in the books and things. Um, and people always leave comments about um, dietary restrictions, vegan, gluten-free. And the interesting thing that no one knows, I think, is that I actually start from that point. I start from a gluten-free vegan recipe in the beginning, and then I kind of evolve it after that, whether or not it needs protein, whether or not it needs, you know, um, dairy. Um, because I think that Nowadays, everyone has so many different dietary restrictions, but really what it comes down to is flavor. If you can make it taste good, it really, you know, doesn't matter that there's no meat in it. And I always tell people, if I didn't tell you that I've given you this recipe that it was vegan, you wouldn't have known and you would have been fine with it. So for me, because I also have dietary restrictions in my own family, and like I said, my kids try all, all of my recipes, that's the place where I start writing from. Um, and then when you get a little deeper, like with Star Wars, when Mark and I work on Star Wars, there's like creatures and things that you want to bring in that can act as certain proteins. It's a little, it's writing Star Wars is different than writing Marvel, but using those creatures as, um, as your, as your EOP, as your, you know, um, uh, puffer pigs, things that, that are, you know, are creatures that people use for food. That makes it a little bit easier in the Marvel universe. We, it's a regular, basically Earth universe, so it's a little bit more difficult. But yeah, in the back of this book, there is a full um, dietary restriction list that will tell you every single recipe, whether it's gluten-free, vegetarian, or vegan. So just flip to the back and see what works for you. And anything can be adapted easily as well. And conversely, with the Star Wars books, we're also able to uh, look into the lore to to write recipes for cultures that may not eat meat or may have dietary restrictions. There may be certain alien races from other worlds that don't partake in, in eating meat. And so we can write recipes for their species since we're writing a galactic cookbook. Um, and so that's kind of fun too. And, but like Jen said, in the Marvel Universe, we, we kind of see where it fits naturally. And, and when those recipes allow us to uh, explore other dietary options and needs, uh, we certainly take the chance to because we want to be as inclusive uh, and open to, as, as possible to as many home cooks as we can. Right. And in our Avengers Campus Cookbook, um, we have these tostadas, basically. And they're, they're made with jackfruit because that is how I serve them at home. And then anyone can eat them. If you choose to replace that with chicken or beef, totally up to you. But that's the starting point for that particular dish, which I think is an easier way for people. If you start from a dietary restriction, then you can easily add meat and add dairy. Absolutely. And I think the fun thing about cooking is like, you just have fun, play with it. I, I'm, I'm notorious of trying to figure out, you know, at the end of the work week, like what's in the kitchen, what can I make with this situation that's in here? And you can typically find a solve. But yeah, I think that's really great that, I mean, a really mindful question to ask, because I know a lot of people do have dietary restrictions. I know some of my friends sometimes have a difficult going to the theme parks because that's where you really don't have that flexibility um, and you have to go with what's offered for the most part. Um, but I think that's great that you're you're in the literary sense, you're putting a list at the back, Jen, because even with even the Gutitama, you know, how hard is this recipe? The easier there's iconography or just a way to break it down makes it way more accessible for chefs around the world to have a crack at it and, and have a, at least a format to follow. Yeah, I don't want anyone to be intimidated because of their skill level or because of way, what they can and can't eat. 
Like anything should be possible for you with these books. And if you love a franchise enough to buy that book, then there should be something in there for you as well. Awesome. 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 Um, next question from Farah. Which Avenger, which Avenger is the biggest booty? Great question. Hulk. Yeah. <laughs> he, 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 may not, uh, he may not appreciate all the effort that goes into making it, but he certainly uh, loves ingesting it. Uh, <laughs> and I think the banner <laughs> side of him would really appreciate all of that. Um, I think, you know, but I, I do find the lore behind this book and this section of the park so fascinating because you don't always directly connect the idea of food with superheroes. And so taking the concept of pin particles, taking these shrink and grow powers that are used by these superheroes to fight villains and to, to stop Thanos and applying them to a real world situation just suddenly opened the doors to so many cool uh, possibilities that, that maybe you hadn't thought of before. And, and I think that, you know, maybe the answer now is, is Ant-Man and the Wasp. Um, because of what they've done scientifically with what were what were formerly just superpowers, and now are these new innovative techniques to change the world of food um, on the Avengers campus? Maybe they're the biggest foodies now, and I think that's really just such a, a fascinating piece of lore that the Imagineers added that we got to expound upon. And what I love about working with comics is comics is ever changing, and as Mark knows, it's like everyone thinks of Hulk as a green creature but you know if you read the comics there's red hulk and there's gray hulk and there's room to like play with that especially when you're creating recipes and creating stories as well absolutely no i think that's a great question and i would love to see more um you know family scenes or those little ones where like even hulk's trying to eat this itty bitty taco i think in one of the uh, one of the avengers films it's just so fun um and there's a reason why i picked him biggest foodie mark you said it <laughs> so great adventure there um Okay, we have one last question to throw at you guys before I let you go to lunch. <laughs> Cecil, yay, one more question. Any future recipes that will incorporate the unique flavor and color of ube? Perhaps a purple milk alternative to the infamous Star Wars blue milk? Great question. I'm Filipino. Um, I love, grew up on ube, so would love to see that also incorporated in more recipes as well. I actually have incorporated it in a lot of my books and the Life Day cookbook that Mark and I wrote, um, there is a recipe for jogan fruit. Jogan fruit in Star Wars is purple and white. And so in my mind, I always go first to ube when it comes um, to purple food and purple recipes that are edible. Um, it's something that's easy to use and something that to me, I feel is easily accessible um, nowadays that you can get like uh, ube extract from Amazon and things like that. Um, and yeah, for sure, ube is always uh, always used, especially in our Star Wars cookbooks because the color of food is just so different than earthly foods. Amazing. Well, great question to end on. I'm gonna look out for your upcoming cookbooks. Mark, I'm gonna look out for the next Marvel book that you have coming out and your video game. I am also a gamer. So that's gonna be a lot of fun to dive into. But it's been such a pleasure to meet you, get to learn a lot more about the Avenger cookbook, which everyone has to get a copy. And if you're lucky enough, please make your way to Disney California Adventure so you can try some of this food in real life or take this home and make it in your kitchen. But thank you both again so much. It's such a pleasure to meet you. And we will definitely have you back for when you have new work to talk about. So thanks so much and have a lovely day. Thank, thank you. you.